Garvin was born on the 20th of March, 1973. He was handicapped at birth and nearly died as he failed to start breathing. He was later confined to a special baby unit in Kingston Hospital until he was well enough to be taken home. But his health did not improve, and he was later admitted to the Children's Hospital at Great Ormond Street, and there it was diagnosed that he had a very rare and fatal bone marrow disease known as Fanconi's anemia. Towards the end of Garvin's life, he had visited on three separate occasions Helen House, a hospice here in Oxford for sick and terminally ill children. On his last visit, he had recorded a television interview with Mother Frances Dominica, the founder of Helen House, in which he talked openly about his illness, fully aware that he was going to die. I was on steroids for five years, for the first five years of my life. And, uh... Well, when I was at ten years old, they took me off them because I had a liver hemorrhage, and they found that was the cause of the problem. And what's um, your illness called? Fanconi's anemia. It's something to do. It's a very rare bone marrow disease. And did Mummy tell you about it? Yes, she did, and she she um helped me to um, get used to my problems and help me, gave, gave me confidence and when I was down and uh, I just went on from there. When you thought that you were going to die, Garvin, were you frightened? At first I was very frightened, yes, I must admit. It was a very frightening thing. How um, do you feel about it now? Much better. I'm... I... I'm... Well, I feel sort of almost as if I want to go there because I believe that there's a life after death. What do you believe that life is like? I believe that life to be um, joyful, happy, no pain, complete suffering over and done with, just complete joy and happiness. And uh, I believe in a Christ, a loving Jesus, and this loving Jesus who I love and who I think to be a very special person to me. He's a special friend to me and he's always got his arms outstretched. I always believe he has his arms outstretched to me whenever I'm in trouble. Garvin, is making your communion important to you? Yes, and it was a very joyful experience, my first Holy Communion. And meeting Christ in Holy Communion, it, I found was a great joy and very sort of mysterious, very um, peaceful. And it's a, it was the only time I could seem to talk to him about my deepest problems and... Uh, I have a really good talk to him about it and what I felt and ask him for his help. And he always answered me back. But to, uh, my way of praying is just praying with an open heart to him so that I get the open answer back. Yes, it's, it was a very important time and my very first time was extremely the most happiest day of my life, I think. That very first day I took it, and uh, his coming to me was very special. So there's a lot to thank God for. Yes, I thank God an awful lot uh, for, for this gift he's given me. I mean, it's, it's very special because it's actually God and man sitting at table, sharing the banquet, sharing his gift, his only his gift, his most precious gift, his son, in the uh, Holy Eucharist, and it is a very special gift, and I always try and get down for that gift, and I always thank him for it every day. What do you think happens to your body when you die? I will leave it behind it. This is only a reflection. This is only something, a sort of tag to say, this is Garvin. 
This is me. So that we can recognise you. Yes. And then the real me, that's uh, when I die, that reflection will be faded, left behind. And the real me, that, that's in, that inner self me, will be out of that reflection and will go up to God. And uh, it, I always believe that it's just like heaven explaining that to, as your God says to you, shut your eyes and that and you just go to sleep and then the next minute you open your eyes and you'll find you're in a a lovely place just a so beautiful that you want to stay there and be with Jesus forever and to and all my friends or some most of my friends who I knew down on this earth uh, that's how I believe have gone to God and when I and I hope that when, that when my time will come, I shall see them and go, go up and say hello to whoever I lost. Like, um, I never saw my grandma, Grandma Doherty, and I hope to see her in heaven and my grandpa and uh, my some of my aunties and uh, my uncle Christy, who I used to know down here very well. And uh I'll meet all those people back up there. And how do you think it will be with the people you leave behind? Will you feel very far away from them yes, and separate that, from them or not? I will, it's very difficult, but um, I believe that Christ will look after my family and whatever needs they need, I know. I I th believe he will provide for them, and I shall always look down on them if I if I go before them, so and I shall always look down on them and always be there. And it's like where where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them, and I will be there in the midst of my family. They might not see me, but I'll be there, watching them, looking after them all the time.